Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Perkins and today I'm talking to author J.D. Penley. J.D. is a father, an author, a publisher, a gamer, a carnap and a self-proclaimed all-around nerd. He currently lives in North Carolina with his wife and daughter who served as the inspiration for two of the characters in his first book. Since the first book was published, the Penleys added a little boy to their family. J.D. enjoys writing fantasy stories with particular focus on the supernatural, such as vampires and magic or immortality. He is currently working on his first series called The Book of the Immortals, with Volume 1 entitled No Peace in Death, already published, and that's what we will be talking about today. Hi, J.D., first of all, welcome, and thank you for coming to talk to me on Book Talk Radio Club. Oh, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. J.D., what was your inspiration for The Book of the Immortals series? Uh, I'd have to say it's probably a, a range of different things. Um, I was just at a point in life where uh, Lucas kind of came out of uh, a situation that I was in where I'd, I'd just come off a divorce. It had been maybe one or two years after that that I had just got the idea to start writing it, and he was, was kind of born out of all the different feelings I was going through uh, whether it be, you know, the betrayal or just the, the disbelief that, you know, I'd, I'd fallen into that trap mm. and then, you know, all the different things that go with that, you know, the anxiety, the depression that comes with it. And he was just kind of basically the, the life preserver, so to speak. He was like, well, I can, I can take all that. So, you know, just let me do it. So he kind of became the, the hero, so to speak, so that I could, you know, pass that on to somebody else. I like that. How many books do you intend on writing in the series? I haven't set uh, an actual solid number. I think it's just kind of get to a point where I'll feel that that's enough and I'll cut it off. But my original intent was to start with a minimum of three Mm. and kind of go from there. And it could either be, you know, some of the other characters would get their own spinoffs or, um, you know, it just would keep building until I, I, I ran out of ideas. <laughs> so here we have Lucas, born into a life most could only dream of, only to have everything ripped away. Broken and in despair, unable to cope with spending eternity alone, he does the unthinkable. He takes his life. And instead of the death he craves, he is transformed into a creature of myth and legend. Wow. Now, if that doesn't make you want to read the book, I don't know what would. J.D., tell us some more about Lucas, please. What kind of man was he before he took his own life? So, in the beginning of his journey, he comes from a a well-to-do family. Uh, They basically are in what amounts to uh, the colonies area of the Americas before uh, it's actually colonized. And they just happen to be there beforehand with some of the people that already lived there. Um... And that I won't get into too much detail about, but they basically are are there before any of that stuff happens. And they're kind of uh, at the forefront of everything that happens. Okay. But Lucas, although now a vampire, isn't a monster, is he? In fact, he's a pretty unusual kind of vampire, not the common or garden type of vampire. What makes him different? So for him, in the beginning, he's confused by it all. He, He doesn't fall into the typical trope of, you know, he's turned by somebody, so he has a master that he answers to uh he basically starts the journey off alone and you know he doesn't feel like a monster so he tries his hardest to hold on to his humanity for a couple of reasons one of which being that it's easier for him to blend in with people Mm -hmm. and nobody will know he's any different if he doesn't act any different that sounds sensible (laughs) i know you enjoyed a number of books by authors such as anne rice and charlene harris but you saw that the characters were always getting the same treatment. They embraced the monster and none of them seemed to want to hang on to their humanity, different from Lucas. So maybe you've broken the mould with Lucas. Do you think he'll be received well? I like to think so. I mean, you know, a lot of those inspirations that I used to essentially create him, you know, gave me the reason to write him, you know, and although I enjoyed reading their books and, and, you know, falling into the worlds they created, it seemed like one way or another, the characters always kind of fell in the same hole. So, Mm. you know, in the vampire diaries, the the vampires would, you know, switch off their humanity and decide to just, you know, not care anymore. Mm. Um, And Charlene Harris's books, there were several vampires that just kind of, you know, gave up on humanity and just wanted to either 
end their immortality or they just went off the deep end and went and embraced the monster. And then, you know, the other ones, they either regretted immortality or they, they hid it away and they just seemed way too depressed about it. So I, I tried my best to make him somebody relatable who tried to be as human as possible despite what he went through. He sounds like a pretty rounded out character to me. I like to think so. As you were writing No Peace in Death, did you find that Lucas was telling you his story? Many authors that I've interviewed have said that their main character began to do that. Yeah, that happened quite a bit. I would find myself in those, you know, writing stints where I could go for hours on end, even after a long shift at work, and he would just speak to me, whether it be at work or on the on the drive home. And as soon as I, I put fingers to keyboard, it, it basically just came pouring out. It was him telling me where the story was going and everything he had been through. So it was like he got to tell the story, and I was just the, the guy writing the pages. One of the acknowledgements in your book is for your daughter Chloe. You say, and I quote, You are one of the reasons I work so hard, and you are my inspiration for Alice. Who is Alice, and what is it about Chloe that inspired you to write the character called Alice? So, Alice is a character that Lucas encounters at one point in his story when he's kind of at the lowest point in his life. He's, you know, he's been an immortal for some time at that point. And he's basically on the, the edge of giving up on humanity just because of everything he's been through. Mm -hmm. And she kind of pulls him back from the edge from that. Uh, when he meets her, she's a, a little girl who's just gone through a very traumatic experience. She's lost both of her parents, and she's in an orphanage. And he basically, you know, is a people watcher. He, he watches humanity, and he kind of sits on the sidelines and watches their stories unfold from a distance and he happens to just find something familiar about her and the way she looks so he kind of relates to the pain that she's been through so she kind of you know becomes a, a reason for him to keep going and that was what it, about chloe that inspired you to write the character uh so basically you know her and i kind of went through you know the divorce together you know her her mother walked out on her to, oh. to pursue somebody else and and got into uh quite a bad situation and she basically kind of went through that same you know letdown that Alice does you know because in a way I had to go through some you know a, a sort of emotional death so to speak mm. with that whole situation to put it behind me yeah so she kind of you know watched the same thing happen let's talk a little about a little about you JD Penley so you live in North Carolina with your wife daughter and son and are a self proclaimed all-around nerd i love that so what makes you a self-proclaimed all-around nerd uh well you know i'm not just into fantasy i, I enjoy sci-fi quite a bit you know I, I was a big star trek and and star wars nerd growing up and me too we still, <laughs> we still love to to celebrate star wars day with you know movie marathons <laughs> um you know we've got the lightsabers and you know, once upon a time, I did the, the dress-up stuff for, you know, Halloween. I would dress as a Jedi. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've been big into the, the fantasy series for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I like Lord of the Rings. You know, I play video games. I work on computers. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of get in all of it. Well, you know what? I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. I mean, I love Star Trek, and I, 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 could, I think I could probably name all the series and you know, know all the words. But I can never say. I can't say I ever dressed up as a character. <laughs> you have a passion for fantasy and fiction. Was there a particular author or book that begun that passion? Mm, not a specific one, but it was just I, I found myself, you know, falling in love with you know stories that could basically pull you in mm. with written word that would make you you know imagine the world they described around Absolutely. you yeah. so you could feel yourself pulled into the story as if you were that character that was being described on the page mm -hmm. so it, it made me want to write that same way i wanted people to pick up the book and look at it as you know well, i can kind of relate to this character and i can i can see myself in this world mm -hmm. you know that way you know it's not just something you pick up read and put down and forget about you you get hooked on that kind of story it becomes almost addictive so to a certain extent. Absolutely. 
Why did you decide to write a series then in a supernatural genre rather than any other genre? Well, that was the kind of the first one that spoke to me. You know, I was toying with that idea for quite some time because, you know, I was not too long fresh off the uh, the True Blood series that was on HBO, which was based on Charlene Harris's Sookie Stackhouse novels. Right. And, you know, between that and, you know, the Twilight hype and reading Anne Rice's work, I was just like coming to a point where I was I was kind of tired of that trope. I wanted I wanted something different. And then through the course of, you know, working on this series, I've had other ideas that I've toyed with over the years that, you know, it would be like a writing prompt I'd come across and go, ooh, that sounds like a great idea. So there's other ones that I have on the back burner that I want to do eventually. Like there's a uh, like a military sci-fi horror series I'm, I'm thinking about at some point in the future you just answer my next question do you see yourself writing in another completely different genre and if so which so military sci-fi huh i think so and that comes from you know uh, a couple of influences which were you know star wars and star trek obviously Mm. um you know battlestar galactic was a big one for me Mm. um there's a, a video game series i played called mass effect which is kind of uh a blend of a couple of different uh genres so to speak mm. and they just kind of you know that along with you know like the sci-fi horror stuff like um you know the resident evil movies and books and video games mm. those kind of you know made me want to do something like that let's go back to your book you've received some wonderful reviews for no peace in death including the storyline caught my attention at the very beginning and kept me interested throughout the entire book and I really loved, I really enjoyed this story and found it unique. The main character, Lucas, is unlike vampires you've read about in the past. Also, love this book and such a great read. I love how the character builds up as well as the story overall. JD, do you find the reviews incentivize you to write more or the sales? Well, I mean, sales are great. And, you know, that that's a goal for the long run to, to be able to just do this full time. Mm-hmm. But hearing somebody enjoyed what I did is more of a reward mm-hmm. at times than, you know, seeing sales figures. Because, you know, knowing somebody else enjoys it just as much as I did writing it is a big deal for me. Yeah, I can understand that, definitely. But lastly, where can Book Talk Radio Club listeners purchase No Peace in Death? So it's in quite a few markets uh, it's on amazon uh, barnes and noble uh, it's on google play books it's on uh, apple books um, smashwords has it bookbub has it um, and i think there's a couple other small markets here and there that they got sent out with those wonderful all right well thank you jd please come back on book talk radio club when you've published the next book in the book of the immortal series i'd love to chat with you and hear more in the meantime Good luck for the future and thank you everyone for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Lovely to speak to you, JD. Thank you.